All right, we have made it to part four of Let's Play KiCad 7, and really I think this might be the most significant video in this KiCad series. We've got a lot to cover, so let's quickly recap. In part two, we learned how to adjust the canvas view, and we also learned how to create a PCB and a 3D model. We learned how to customize the application, so hopefully you have your mouse and keyboard settings just the way you want them. Today, we're going to seriously go to work on the schematic, and you'll know you're ready for this video when you can move around the canvas freely, kind of like I am right now. By the end of this video, you will be able to create any one-page schematic that uses the default parts, or default symbols as they're called in KiCad. Open the KiCad application, and then create a new project by clicking on File, New Project. Give your project a memorable name and location. Today, I'm going to build a Wilson Current Mirror, so that's the name I'm going with. What you name it is up to you, so select a name, wait for your files to appear on the application, and then open up the schematic editor by double-clicking the file that ends in keycad underscore sch. Wait for the environment to load, and recall from part 2 that the 50mm grid is the easiest for us to work with. On the left-sided toolbar, I'm going to select mils as the unit of measure. Then on the bottom of the screen, I will check to see if it says grid 50 mils. If not, you can press N as in November, and when it says 50 mils, we are ready to try some basic operations. On the right hand side, you'll see a vertical list, and from top to bottom, these are Select, which is the most important of all, Net Highlight, Add Symbol, Power Port, and finally Wire. In my opinion, these five are the bare minimum you're going to need in order to build a basic schematic and easily catch errors. Let's start from the top with Select Mode, and you can enter it by either clicking the icon or you can press the Escape key. This is the mode that lets you select things and move them around. Below that is Highlight Wires, also known as Net Highlight. When you click on this icon, any wire you click on after that is going to glow magenta, and I like to use this tool to check whether I have things connected. But for now, just know that a net and a wire are similar but different. Below this icon, you will see the Add Symbol icon, which tends to look like an op amp. You can either click on it, or you can press A as an Add. Go ahead and activate it, and when you do, you'll notice that at least two things have happened. First, the status bar on the bottom of the window in the background has changed to Add Symbol. Normally, this is going to happen anytime you use that toolbar on the right side. But more importantly, we can now see the Choose Symbol window. In KiCad 7, every symbol is going to be part of a library, even if that library only contains one symbol. Above the long list on the left-hand side, click inside the text box, because this is going to be your search field. The component I'm going to search for is MMBT3904. It's a popular transistor. When the results appear, go ahead and click on it and have a look around. This entire area on the left-hand side will show all the results that matched our criteria. This search engine is based on regular expressions, also called regex, and without going into too much detail, it's a very powerful but counterintuitive language for searching for strings. This particular transistor has a counterpart that's through-hole, and its part number is 2N3904. Because of the regex system, I can do a either-or style of search by creating parentheses, entering both part numbers, and separating them by a vertical bar. But more often than not, I will just enter one part number at a time. In this area on the upper right, we have a preview of what the symbol is going to look like when we add it to the canvas later. Below the preview, we can see that the original author has also already defined a footprint for this part number, but this isn't always the case. Sometimes all we want is a generic symbol, because we might not know which footprint we want to use this early in design. We can also see from this area at the bottom that the original author included metadata, like the descriptions, keywords, part numbers and manufacturer names, or anything else that can help narrow down the search. Now, I've decided that I don't want to use a 3904, and what I want to do is look for a generic symbol. So I will erase my search criteria, and this will reset the display to show every possible library. If you click on the list and then press the up or down keys, you can cycle through all the libraries, and the library I'm looking for is called Device. Personally, the large number of options I have here is the main reason I use KiCad to begin with. When you locate the device library, you can expand the view by either clicking on the arrow, or you can press the right arrow key. The exact generic symbol I want is called Q underscore NPN underscore BEC. Q tells me that it's a transistor, NPN is the transistor type, and BEC is short for Base Emitter Collector. In other words, it's telling me that pin 1 is assigned to the base, pin 2 is the emitter, and you know the rest. 
There are other permutations available, MOSFETs, TRIAX, and other transistors, or transistor-like devices, may also follow this type of convention. So I found the part that I want, and now I can double-click on it to accept, or simply press OK. This will take you back to the schematic, and the part you selected will follow your cursor. Click on the canvas to set it down, and you might already notice that KiCad has automatically assigned the reference value of Q1. Unlike earlier versions of KiCad, version 7 will automatically do this for you. You can disable this behavior by going to the left-handed toolbar and clicking this button. The main point is no two components in the entire design should have the same reference number. To change the reference manually, click on the body of the symbol, and by that I mean don't click on any text, and once the symbol is highlighted, you can press U as in uniform, change it any way you want, then you can press OK or cancel. Let's make sure this part is highlighted again, and this time press V as in value. Doing this will let you change the component value, and normally the value is either going to be a part number, a measurement such as resistance or capacitance, or some other short description. Optionally, you can choose to hide the value by clicking on the checkbox here, but because I don't need that now, I'm just going to click on Cancel. Now it's time to add a resistor. Once again, click on the Add Symbol button, or you can press A as an Add. Clear away any leftover search criteria, and enter the text R underscore small. Locate the exact match, and then double-click on it to select it. Place the resistor anywhere in this general area, and now we can learn how to copy and paste. This current mirror is going to need more transistors, so let's highlight the original, and then press Ctrl C to copy it to the clipboard. Ever since KiCad 6.0, copying and pasting has been improved, and I'll show you how later. For now, just press Ctrl V to paste, and once again click the canvas to set it down. Press Ctrl V again, and let's repeat this until we have five transistors. Now, at this point, I think I have too many transistors on the screen, and on second thought, I only want three in total. So I'm going to select transistors Q4 and Q5 in anticipation of deleting them. Let's do a box select by first pressing escape to enter select mode, and then you'll need to mouse over the area of interest. Click and drag in order to highlight, and I should mention that doing this from left to right is going to highlight anything that's completely encircled in the box select. But if I do this from right to left, anything that the box select touches, even slightly, is going to be selected. You can even see this on the screen because the two versions are going to be different colors. Now, at this point I've selected way too much, so I can choose to do a toggle select by holding down the control key or the command key, and then I can click on anything I want deselected. If I change my mind, I can do this again, and this toggle selection is going to become very handy with really densely drawn schematics. So let's make sure that only Q4 and Q5 are highlighted, press delete, and we have now removed them from the canvas. Now at this point Q1 is facing the wrong direction, so let's highlight it, and then press R as in rotate. By default this will rotate the component in 90 degree steps. Now this is a little closer, but this isn't quite what I wanted. What I want is all the emitters facing down. Symbols like this one have chirality or handedness, and no amount of rotating is going to cut it. So we're going to select Q1, press the X button as in X direction, and now we have a mirrored symbol. If for some reason you ever want to rotate the text, you can click directly on it, and then you can rotate or mirror after it's highlighted. So now it's time to add a ground symbol. On the right side of toolbar, you can click on the power port icon, or you can press P for power. Now this dialog window that popped up works a lot like the add symbol dialog, but the results are pre-filtered to only show power symbols. As our search criteria, let's type in GND as in ground, and the style that I want is the zero volt reference. Double click to accept, and once again click on the canvas to add it. In KiCad 7, power ports will behave differently from regular symbols. They can only have one pin, the values field is read only, you cannot give them a footprint, and KiCad will not include them in the bill of materials. Finally, if you run a wire to a power port, that wire will inherit the one and only pin name of the power port itself. Let's try that out for ourselves by pressing the W button, or you can click on the wire icon. To begin routing the wire, you can either press W again, or you can click on the tip of any unconnected pin. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and wire up the rest of the current mirror, and while I'm doing that in the background, I will also mention that the device library has many different symbol variants of popular components. Today we added the small resistor, but there is another version available in a different size. 
The resistor shape is based on industry standard IEC 60617-12, like the style that you would see in the European Union. Because I'm based in North America, I will usually draw my schematics according to ANSI Y32.2 or IEEE Standard 91. For capacitors that are polarized, you also have options for IEC or ANSI. And for diodes, including light-emitting diodes, you have the option of filled or non-filled. And I do recommend exploring the library. If I want to reposition a symbol but leave its wires behind, I can mouse over it and press the M key as in move, and this will detach the symbol from any connected wires. But to leave the wires attached, I can either click and drag or press the G button. Finally, before I go, let's try out a couple of group operations. Do another box select, and remember that left to right works different from right to left. When the group is selected, we can press R as in rotate, X as in x-ray, or Y as in Yankee, and this will operate on the entire group. And that is it for part 4. In part 5 we're going to see more detail regarding wires and nets, and in part 6 we will cover intermediate operations using labels. As usual, be sure to share this in your social network, and I'll see you in the next one.